Somali pirates hijack another ship. Media focuses on the sensitive cargo. What about the most sensitive cargo? The hostages, victims of piracy. Next on Global Pulse. A comparison of how media worldwide are covering this story. Pirates. Sure, we tend to think of pirates as not a real threat in the modern age. Here in America, they've been relegated to making cheese puffs and helping us get into art school. But pirates do continue to be a threat and are not just characters of history in Hollywood anymore. I take what I want and I watch what I take. <laughs> modern day Somali pirates are making millions a year and thriving in the Indian Ocean off of the Horn of Africa. In this exclusive footage shot by pirates and obtained by CNN from a third party, this group doesn't look like much. But pirates off the coast of Somalia have made these sea lanes some of the most dangerous in the world. In 2007, Somali pirates hijacked 23 ships. This year, the number has already doubled, and it's believed they have made close to $30 million in ransom payments. It's believed the pirates currently still hold 12 ships, and one of those ships is what finally brought international media attention to the crimes. France's TV5 explains. The face-off continues off the Somalia coast between the U.S. Navy and pirates that captured a Ukrainian ship carrying weapons last Thursday. There's still confusion about the destination of the cargo. According to the pirates, the weapons and tanks were en route to Sudan, and not Kenya, as its government claims. The bandits still demand a ransom of $20 million. As international media focused on the weaponry and the ransom, the human aspect of the situation was explored differently in some countries. Who are the victims of piracy? According to Russia Today, it's the families of the Ukrainian crew whose fear and frustration isn't motivating the government enough. On board the Faina are 20 crew, and every day since it was seized three weeks ago has been a painful wait for the relatives of the detained sailors, especially with threats coming from the bandits that they would blow up the ship if the reported $8 million ransom isn't paid. Many feared that in the event of an assault, the crew would have no chance of surviving. But authorities stress violence is not an option. The assurances have calmed them somewhat. But relatives of the crew are coming up with their own methods of support. They're asking for donations to help meet the ransom, insisting that every little bit helps. But what about the pirates' side of the story? Al Jazeera English presented a sympathetic ear to the pirates, as they feel they are the true victims. This is the road to Il, just a small town on Somalia's coast, but now also home to the pirates of the 21st century. We are pirates pushed by hunger, the lack of government, and the solution is that the world should recognize Somalia and help put its government in place. Osman Ali Musa is a pirate serving a life sentence at the main prison in Bosaso. I was a fisherman when all our marine resources were stolen by illegal fishing boats. We had no option but to go into piracy. We are performing the role of Somalia's navy. How can I be criminal when I'm defending our seas? It's this feeling of nationalist heroism that encourages pirates in Somalia. If I'm released today, I will go back to piracy. While the pirates believe their actions are patriotic, the BBC presents how their interference victimizes their own people. The food aid that Somalis need so badly begins its journey in the Kenyan port of Mombasa. But this food consignment, like all shipping in Somali waters, faces a hurdle before it reaches Somalia. Pirates. Captain Schweib had tales to tell. Everything is taken. Everything's taken. What, yeah. even their clothes? Even clothes, underwear, and the money. Their underpants. And are taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The peacekeepers oversaw the safe arrival of the food aid ship, and some of these sacks of grain will reach the hungry. But the rise in piracy is part of a wider breakdown of Somali society. It won't be resolved until the war on the land is over. And that doesn't seem likely anytime soon. For Global Pulse, this is Aaron Coker. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.